Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Outdoor Recreation Council of BC's September webinar, uh, Tips to Promote Your Recreation Organization Through Social Media. Uh, my name is uh, Louise Peterson, and I'm joining you from our Revelstoke office. And I would like to acknowledge with much uh, gratitude and much appreciation that this is the land, the land in which I walk, play, live, uh, is the, are the traditional and unceded territories of the Sinaiaks, the Silks, the Sequapmec, and the Tonaha people. Uh, the Outdoor Recreation Council, actually I think most of you will know, we are a charitable organization with uh, many members that span the entire spectrum of outdoor recreation user groups. We give a collective voice to, um, to the interests and concerns of organized outdoor recreation associations and, and clubs uh, when speaking to government and to industry we uh, we advocate for access and funding and we build capacity within the sector through resources education and webinars such as this one we indirectly represent more than a hundred thousand uh, bridge columbians and i would like to invite you all to to join the outdoor recreation council as a member or, or as a donor and um because in that way you'll be able to provide direct support uh, to important initiatives such as, uh, you know, these public webinars and our advocacy efforts. And um, the best way to find out more is just to head over to our website. It's orcbc.ca. Uh, so thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, we are recording the webinar and we'll share it with you in the next day or so. Um, so yeah, volunteer-led outdoor recreation groups in BC spend thousands and thousands of hours each year. Uh, at least uh, 155,000 hours uh, were recorded by the ORC uh, through a survey that we did uh, last month. And that was for 2022. These volunteers, they develop and maintain infrastructure. They advocate for access and opportunities. And then involved in land use planning, they organize community events, engage in environmental stewardship activities that deliver many uh, very valuable programs. We know from uh, what we hear around us and from an Ipsos poll that the Outdoor Recreation Council commissioned last summer that the public isn't fully aware of the extent that these volunteer, uh, what these uh, volunteer based groups do and how much they do. So clearly we can all do more to help ensure that the public and decision makers are aware of the significant role that volunteer-based recreation groups play in communities all across the province. Um, so today uh, we'll talk about, you know, some top tips that you can all use to promote your um, club or your uh, recreation associations through social media to, to reach a wider audience to engage with your target demographic, whatever that is, and achieve goals such as, uh, you know, more members, more sponsors, and more uh, community uh, support. And I'm excited that we've got uh, four presenters, four amazing women who uh, have joined me here today, uh, who are willing to share their knowledge and some of the lessons that they have learned through their working life and, and volunteer experiences. The first, our first presenter is uh, Jennifer Colbuck. She is with Mountain Top Consulting. Um, and I've actually been working with, with uh, or, uh, Jennifer has been helping us here at, at the Outdoor Recreation Council. Jennifer has spent the, over 15 years helping big brands, nonprofits, and solopreneurs. Actually, that was the first time that I've heard that term, that term create a social media plan that works for their business. Um, and when she's not color coding her latest uh, worksheets, you'll find her hitting the trails around Metro Vancouver, Rain or Shine, I guess probably with your kids, huh? <laughs> um, businesses hire Jennifer when they realize it's time to get uh, um, social media, a social media and digital marketing strategy in place for their business. Jennifer loves to keep it real for her clients and is known for her fast talking and endless social media ideas. And you can find her online on Instagram at uh, social with Jen, or um, you can connect with her on LinkedIn. I will just kind of go through our other presenters. Um, we've got Nicole Mete, who is the, the program and marketing coordinator with BC Snowmobile Federation. She's going to tell us a little bit more about you know what the Snowmobile Federation um, is doing and, and some of the some, some of the good tips that 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 um, she has found useful with over two decades of experience in professional mountain rescue, outdoor recreation, and tourism management. Nicole is a passionate advocate for organized snowmobiling in BC as program and marketing coordinator for the BC Snowmobile Federation and Let's Ride BC. She's dedicated to showcasing the efforts of BC's 60 volunteer-driven snowmobile club, 
maps and the diverse riding destinations around the province. We're also going to introduce you to uh, two um, of the staff members from North Okanagan Cycling Society, Julie Millinson, she's the executive director. Her background is in mountain bike racing in Canada and New Zealand, uh, and along with her experience in marketing and communications for the Nordic ski world, that has led her to the, the role as executive, executive director for uh, Knox, so North Okanagan Cycling Society. She remembers when her board had five directors and the, the club has grown quite a lot since then, and I'm sure she'll tell us more about that. Um, she's joined by Linnea Nilsson, their social media officer. Linnea's journey began in outdoor retail, leading her to become the, the Canadian marketing coordinator for an outdoor apparel company. She then transitioned to a social media coordination role for tourism and outdoor recreation organizations in BC. So uh, yeah, those are our four presenters, but uh, Jennifer, let's start with you and I'll stop sharing so that you awesome. can... Well, actually, you can just share on top of this. <laughs> Take over, I think. Uh, and thank you for that wonderful introduction, uh, Louise. Just give me a moment here to get set up. Uh, there we go. Present. So hopefully, oh, hold on. Other way around. Da, 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 I got too many tabs here. Um, obviously, today you're going to hear from uh, three different groups. And so we've got lots of information to share. Oh, hold on here. Um, I have tried to cram in as much as I can to this presentation, but also understanding that we've got about 25 minutes of time. Um, as I go through the presentation today, please feel free to use the chat to ask questions as we go. Um, if I can answer the question on the spot because it's about the slide, I will do that. Um, otherwise I'll hold questions until the end um, and we can do that. And if I don't have time to get to your question today, I will leave contact details in the chat after, and I'd love to connect with you uh, directly one-on-one -on -one so that I can answer more specific questions about your outdoor organization. You already heard about me, so I will skip right over this. Um, and I'm gonna give you just a quick outline of where this presentation is going to go today. Um, so first we're gonna talk about just kind of level setting, like what's the point of social media? Um, I know many of you here are, are pressed for time. You know, you may be wearing all of the many hats um, in your club or organization. So I really do wanna make sure that you're making the most of the limited time you have available with your social media. I see some people laughing along with that. So I think we're in the right place. Uh, we're gonna talk about stop promoting your blog and what to do instead. And I've got some examples of that speaks to you. Uh, we'll tap on user generated content. I'll take a poll closer to see how many of you are or are not using that. Um, and then finally, we'll wrap up with some Q&A at the end. Okay, so what's the point of your social media? Why are we doing this in the first place? And, and what are some of the outcomes we want to have from your social media? So I'm gonna give you some examples like here. Does your account look like one of these? And there's no right or wrong answers here. On the left, we see Vancouver Trails. This is an account I actually helped help to co-manage for a number of years. Uh, beautiful hiking photos. As you scroll through, always see your beautiful hiking photos. That is what works for that account because that account is not trying to sell you anything like a membership. On the right, I picked the beautiful Trail Society of BC. I'm not quite sure what their outcome or mandate is there either. So might be a good time to check what we're doing on Instagram specifically. Uh, you know, for Vancouver Trails, it's beautiful photos but it doesn't tell me what they actually do. This is okay for this account. If you're in a place right now where your feed is beautiful photos, we're halfway there, but we're gonna look at some tips to maybe shift some things so that we have some more tactical outcomes other than just beautiful photos of your destination or, or ATVing or cycling. On the right though, you may be in a place where sometimes you've had multiple people managing your social media. It feels like we're kind of posting on a whim. And again, I can't quite easily see through like, what are we advocating for? What are those big messages and takeaways? So let's see if we can kind of change that just slightly, just to kind of improve what might be going on there just a little bit. So the first thing you wanna do, and I have selected the lovely ORCBC account as a great example of social media because they are doing great stuff. Um, the goal for, I think, most of us on the call here today is we don't just want to say your, you know, your destination is beautiful or your activity is beautiful. All of you are trying to drive action. You know, you either want more donations, more members, more volunteers to come out uh, to help with all that amazing trail work that's going on. So we do really want to make sure that your account isn't just beautiful photos, but actually is driving those actions that you have listed out for yourselves as well. So when I quickly look at someone's account, and this is a great example here at the ORCBC, 
I can see exactly what they're doing and what they're advocating for. Uh, they've really up-leveled their game to have more of that advocacy work front and center in their social media so that as I'm browsing through their content, I know some of the big events that are coming up. I know the objectives that they're doing. Um, and then they have great reports on uh, you know, the, the BC funding and things like that too. So we always want to keep that in mind when we're posting, you know, pretty pictures are great, but we want to make sure we're not getting our message sometimes lost in those pretty pictures if that's all we've been posting so far. Okay, everyone's good so far. So let's break down content pillars. I could talk about this at length for about an hour, but I will give you a very succinct summary for our time here today. Most of you are, I imagine, are probably doing content pillar number one Okay, this is probably your easiest one. These are those beautiful pictures, the inspiration content where we inspire someone to come and cycle in Vernon, where we inspire someone to come and explore the backcountry. Um, and there are those really beautiful photos that maybe you are using through user generated content or that you have access to or that you're using through other partnerships. Um, and the goal here is just remind people about the beautiful activities and the spaces that you offer. Fantastic. So if you're already doing a great job on that, great. Sometimes where we forget with the, these types of organizations is that we do need to educate people. So we're going to spend a bit of time on this content pillar today because we actually need to remind people about, you know, what exactly does your organization do? Um, other than just say, hey, we've got great trails here in Vernon. But at the end of the day, you probably want members to come out and support different initiatives that you have going on with your cycling trails or with your ATV trails or with your snowmobiling trails. So the goal of this type of content is really to engage your members, your volunteers, um, and just the general public at large, of course, if you're looking for publication support. Uh, support. So some of the examples for this type of content that we're going to dive more into are things like funding updates. People love to know about money and how money is or is not being spent, if that's something you're able to share publicly for your organization. Um, how the trails are being maintained. So, I mean, stats about those amazing number of volunteer hours that go into your recreation, uh, you know, your recreation community. Um, and the fact that those hours obviously are unpaid and are a labor of love. Um, that's really something great to share. Um, trail updates, of course, we know with changing seasons, changing weather environments, um, things can change quickly. Um, you know, with wildfire season, things are impacted and things are closed. Um, we know there are there's campfire bans. We know with rainy season, trails may be washed out. So we want to make sure your, your members and your, your followers are getting that information really quickly, especially when it's really timely and important. Um, and then any rules or regulations that may impact your industry or may come to impact your industry if it's something that's going through um, government update right now. And then finally, action. Yes, we do at the end of the day want your social media to lead to action. Um, and we want to make sure we have content specifically for that. And for some of you, you may over-index on this area or you may not have enough in this area. So it's a great time to maybe as I'm talking, kind of scroll through your social media platform of choice and say, now, when was the last time we asked someone to donate or to come out to an event or to volunteer? Um, sometimes we actually forget to be really directive in our ask. And it is OK to ask that. You know, you guys are all here lobbying, volunteering, doing all that hard work. And so it is OK to ask people to support you in those ways. We just want to make sure it's not all we're doing. What we want our content to look like is this, essentially. And it doesn't have to be a perfect funnel, but just you know, go with the visual analogy for now. We want to think of those content pillars as buckets that we can fill up. And sometimes we get stuck on the top of the funnel. And you know, we're posting the beautiful photos and we're showcasing the beautiful regions that we have across British Columbia, but we forget to move people down the funnels. And as we forget to do those education pieces or we forget to do the direct, direct ask. Conversely, sometimes I see it the opposite way where we're kind of stuck here asking and asking and asking, but we forgot to engage people. We forgot to tell them the kind of the why behind the scenes, or we forgot just to share some kind of easy awareness connection pieces too. So when we're building out our content plan, we want to make sure that we're hitting all three of these pieces, you know, every month. We want to make sure we're not, we don't have a whole month where we don't talk about action, or we have a whole month where all we talk about is action all the time. We're doing so far okay? Any questions? Any questions so far? I feel like maybe, maybe not. We're just absorbing. Okay, well, let me know and I can certainly go back over some things. Okay, now somebody asked, and this was a great question, you know, for some of your, for some of the regions that we're working in, things are changing quickly, or there may be trail updates. 
So how do we keep some of those things top of mind about trail etiquette, fire bans, uh, wildlife tips and safety? Uh, and so one recommendation I would do to keep that edge of that really front and center educational content would be to use the pinned post feature on Instagram. Maybe by a show of hands or maybe in the chat, has anyone ever pinned a post on Instagram before or knows what a pinned post is? If you can say yes or no in the chat or just give me like a, give me a hand raise. Okay, I've got Daniel saying maybe. I've got a couple of people like no. Okay, okay, I've got okay, I've got a couple. No, yes, okay. So we're we're a bit of a mix on the pinned post feature. So Instagram gives you the ability if you click on any post already in your feed, if you click on the edit dots, and you can try it right now on your phone if if that's accessible to you, and you can actually click pin post, and it will pin it to the top of your feed. Uh, you can only have three pinned posts at a time. You can't really see the pin because it's white on white here, but there's actually a little pin on these posts. Um, and you can pin them to the top. If that information is complete, done, seasonal, you simply click unpin and it will remove it from the top and just go back into the chronological order in your feed. Um, so this is a really great way for kind of those, if you want to introduce someone to the world of cycling or snowmobiling and you've got updates that are really important or member updates, pin those posts to the top so that they sit there. Um, I have a couple of posts pinned to the top of my feed that are there all the time. And even though they're they're months old, you know, in, in chronological order, I actually still get comments on them like all the time. Uh, so even though, you know, people are discovering my content and then they will immediately comment on one of those pinned posts. Uh, so this quick change can kind of help you keep some of those things really top of mind. And it might be like how to become a member, upcoming, well, how to volunteer with us, and maybe an etiquette post as well about cycling etiquette in North <laughs> Okanagan, <laughs> you know, or the top trails for cycling in North Okanagan. It might be something like that as an example. Um, so that can kind of be a way to keep those posts top of mind. So people, again, are right away getting those quick educational bites that they need um, from your organization. Okay, stop talking about your blog post. I like this one. Um, maybe in the chat again, say the word blog if you have a blog on your website. And a blog could be any type of long form content. It doesn't have to be a traditional blog. It could be other types of long form content. Does anyone have a blog or long form content like this? So maybe blog posts, news updates, papers. Okay, Brittany's saying yes, research, press. Okay, I've given more options. We've got a few more people. So if you have... And oh good, we have, okay, James, outdoor recreational, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so a lot of you are already doing all of the hard work of writing these amazing blog posts um, or maybe long form content like Wild, Wild Safe BC. I know you guys have tons of long form content on there for sure. Um, or papers or press releases. Um, so you've got this beautiful long form content and everyone's like, yes, you know what we should do with it? We should do this post. We should put a post out that says new blog post. Okay. Have we all done this before? We have. It's okay. We've all been here. We've all been really, you know, we've got to tell them we have a new blog post because you put all this time and effort into the blog post and you're like, we have to tell the people about the blog post. And so we make a really quick and easy post about the blog post. And lo and behold, I'm going to assume that you probably did not get a lot of engagement on said Instagram post or on your blog post, right? You probably were like, oh, bummer. Why did no one read our blog post? So a couple quick the tips here. I have to tell everybody, the goal of Instagram is not to drive traffic to your blog post, not in that straight format, not in that click the link and go to your website. Um, the goal of social media is to actually drive engagement on social media. Does this mean I think you should kill blog posts? Absolutely not. They're still very important uh, for a number of reasons. And one of those main reasons being SEO or search engine optimization for our friend Google. So blog posts, long form content is still super important, but if we write the content like this, no one is going to go to your website to read it. So what can we do instead? Let's take a look. Oh, here also newsletters. If you have a beautiful newsletter, which I know the ORCB, ORCBC does, it's beautiful, it's beautifully designed. Again, if we put the URL in the caption, it is not clickable. We cannot click the URL in the caption. And we've probably all been guilty of this at some time. That's okay. Uh, you know, we have to learn one thing at a time and learn to improve. Um, again, we've got to convince people why to sign up and we've got to make it really, really easy for them. So instead of doing that type of content, here's a few examples we can use. Ta -ta -da -da, look at that. Remember that lovely 2004 budget, budget consultation report? 
look at this beautiful Instagram carousel from RCBC that they might have gotten some templates from me from. Um, so this is a great example of how we can take all of the hard work that the team wrote that, you know, wrote the report on, uh, wrote, you know, you already spent all that time. And instead we're gonna chunk it out into one post. So this is one post, it's called a carousel post. So there's multiple slides in a carousel post, anyone new to that terminology. And now I know, because I've seen these posts in, in the feed, these posts do get engagement because people, you know, and they actually are getting read. So instead of saying, click the link in our bio, zero eyeballs on it, we just take the same words and we just chunk it down into a post that's actually optimized for social media. Um, and you can do this on different platforms. I know we're talking about Instagram, but this could be done on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever primary platform uh, your club organization is doing. Um, and you can see here, you know, the design is simple. I know not everyone's, I don't have to be a graphic designer. This was done in Canva. You don't have to be using fancy tools, really just simple text, maybe the odd image, the simpler, the better. Here's another example um, of another really long form post also from the RCBC. We see a beautiful introductory image and then just text on graphics. That's it. What do we think about this concept so far? Do we think for some of us, we might be able to execute like a blog post a month on a carousel? Hopefully some people are like, maybe, maybe I'm open to this idea. Um, you can see here for all of this, the goal isn't to, to make it complicated. When I designed this, I mean, I literally took the verbatim paragraphs from the hard work that Louise's team had done and just put it onto Canva and just designed it that way. So the goal here is really to take the hard work that you might have. You might have a year's worth of blog content for some of you guys already. How can we take that and put it into a format that's more user-friendly for the social media channel itself, thus driving more engagement for you guys and coming back to that second content pillar as well. Okay, we're good so far. It's very quiet in the chat today. You guys are very quiet here, okay. So there you go. So for all of that, you know, remember back to that piece, when you take one long form of content, turn it to a carousel, just remember this formula without overcomplicating it. What's the hook? Why would somebody be interested in the blog post? We don't want to call it new blog post. We do want to give it a bit of a, an interesting title, if you will. What are the facts? And again, you can just go through the facts. One, two, three, here's what's new. Here's the update. And then don't forget to remind your audience, why should they care? You know, what's in it for them? Um, is it going to impact their trail access? Um, is it an environmental update where uh, they need to know about? Um, is there an opportunity to uh, get more funding, get more donations? Uh, because, you know, something's going to happen. Is there an opportunity to expand the park, the trails or access um, in your community? So make sure that we really deliver home. Like, why would your audience or your members, um, you know, really kind of care about that? Um, and I like that, I, Paul, that's the perfect comment. It's so true. Um, unfortunately, we've, we, so few people read long form content in this form anymore. Um, we're really used to these bite sized snippets. Um, and that's what we can do by taking, still to keep the beautiful long form on your website from an SEO perspective, but now chunk it out a little bit to make it more conducive to the average reader. So yeah, that's, that's exactly right, Paul. That's perfect. <clears throat> Okay, finally, I wanted to talk about stories before I get to the next section here. Um, for people who are looking for the action piece, don't neglect Instagram stories. Instagram stories is really the, the you know, that action conversion piece. Um, I know, again, with our time considerations, um, time can be, can be tricky. I sometimes tell my clients, if you're really short on time, I'd rather you post an Instagram story than a post. Uh, because an Instagram story can enable you to include a direct link, which is fantastic when you have that last call for donations or volunteers or an event. Um, or you could use it for, for features like polling. Um, obviously, polling on Instagram does not maybe meet the criteria of a scientific survey, <laughs> slightly different criteria there. But if you are looking for generalized feedback from your members, um, this could be another way, another tool that you, you could use to engage them for. So I think about some of the surveys you might send out and how can we get some of that information through Instagram stories instead, um, if that's appropriate for the survey that you might be putting out. So don't neglect the stories piece because this piece is really what's going to drive for that conversion opportunity, conversion meaning signups, donations, volunteers. Um, share more of these if you've been kind of neglecting these in the past, you know, summer season, which I know for many of you is quite busy. And finally, for this section, don't be scared to direct message. 
Um, okay, hands up. Who here has ever sent a one-on-one -on -one direct message to their follower? Just because, you know, anyone? Has anyone ever direct messaged their followers? I think everyone here is like, no, absolutely not. I would never do that. Um, okay, spoiler alert. When you have a really important campaign going on, an event coming up, a fundraising opportunity, don't be shy to DM your followers. Um, I was working with, again, the RCBC for a campaign where we were, we were emailing uh, the MLA campaign. Um, and this is what I did. I just DM'd the heck out of everybody. Louise can attest. Um, and it really worked. It really worked to actually convert people to sign up. Um, unfortunately, Instagram does not show our content to every single follower for every single post. I wish that it did, but the days of the algorithm are, uh, they're just changed now. So even though you might be like, but I just posted about that volunteer opportunity, don't be scared to reach out to people via direct message. Um, the key with it is really, you know, we don't want to spam people. I do always take a moment to personalize my direct messages. Um, but for most of my signups for events, conversions, you know, email, um, this works. This typically works hands down almost everything else. Um, and this could be something you do, you know, just for, again, those really special opportunities. And maybe you spend 10 minutes a day for that week. That's it. Um, I know all of you are, you know, wearing again, those many, many hats in your organizations. And so I don't want this to be a piece that's burdening you, but think about for those really key events, could one of our team members spend 10 minutes a day just inviting people to the webinar or inviting people to that event? via direct message. Okay. Yes. We're thinking about direct messages, maybe. Okay. I'll wrap up with this section then. Um, who here is using user-generated content so far? If you are, drop a UGC like that in the chat. If you were like, yes, we already use UGC or just say no, no. Oh, I like, okay, good. I love that. The, I love that you guys are already using UGC, Linnea. While it's HBC says no. Anyone else want to give me a yes or no? Not yet. Okay. Paul Gray is on it, says yes. Um, okay, so we've got a bit of a mix. So good. If everybody was like, yes, hands down, then I, I, would, I wouldn't include this section, but I'll quickly go through it then for our members who are not yet using user-generated content. Um, so for, I know we're not quite in tourism, but that's kind of where this all came from. Um, and my background is in tourism. So user-generated content just means any content that you yourself did not create, but your users, your followers, your clients, your members, your customers, that they created and shared in the public domain. That's all it is, just a fancy word to mean content that somebody else created. Now, why do I love user-generated content, especially for all of the people we have on here because we all have these beautiful spaces? One, a big one is it's going to save you time uh, because you can't always be out in the outdoors area where you are, especially some of you have very, you know, the entire province is your region. Um, and Louise isn't in the entire province taking pictures every day. Uh, she's in Revelstoke. Um, and so, she, you know, Louise sometimes has to source images from other places that are then representative of the other places in your region. So that's a great way to save time. Uh, of course, live access. Uh, because we're all dealing with the outdoors, the weather is going to have huge impacts on what's open, what's closed, uh, fire, fire bans. Um, and so sometimes you can source images or videos that then will give you that real time um, update if that's really important for you. Um, and this one, which often gets forgotten about, is it actually helps to build community with your followers. When you're sourcing images from your community in an authentic way, people love seeing themselves featured. Like people love to be like, oh, this, you know, the Trails of BC Society featured me today. That's so cool. Um, and so it actually builds a really strong rapport with your members. And I have seen this time and time again with Vancouver Trails. Um, how to do this in a nutshell, really quick, because I'm probably short on my time. Louise dropped a time for me in the chat so I know how much time I have left here. Um, really quickly, you can look for hashtags in your area or a location. If you have a physical uh, like town that you are based out of, you can search there. Um, and of course, you can search through tourism partners, membership partners, or any other kind of affiliate organization to find the photos. That's kind of step one. Step two, and this is the most important step of this entire process, is ask for permission. Um, in theory, you could just take somebody out uh, photos very quickly, but I always recommend asking for permission just so we feel really good about building that community. And then this step, write this one down for anybody who's new, and I'll drop the link in the chat after I'm done. This is a website that lets you download people's stuff from Instagram. It is called igram.world, igram.world. Really fun. You can have a little test after. You can drop any Instagram link in there and you can actually download the images so you actually get the high resolution full up, full like a 
full uh, video or photo like that. Um, and then if you're doing this a lot, I keep a Google Doc. If you're doing it one-off, you probably can just manage it one-off. If it's a way your organization wants to source more photos over time, then I recommend making it systemized. And then finally, don't forget to include the credit back. So we never want to post somebody's photo or video without their consent, without their permission, um, and without actually recognizing them. So just make sure that you can see here, I've got the camera icon and their name, and then I've also tagged them in the image as well so they know that, you know, I, I don't want to take credit for somebody else's work. So happy to dive into this more one-on-one -on -one if you guys have questions, but that's the quick and, quick and dirty method of actually using um, UGC for your organization there. Finally, I just wanted to wrap it up with this because I know I'm coming to the end of my time here. You know, as you guys go away today, I would first go back to, you know, what content do you already have on your blog, on your press section that you could repurpose for social media? Um, sometimes you spend a lot of time coming up with new ideas when in fact, you've got a whole bank of ideas already on your website. Um, the next thing I would look at is how often are you telling your followers what we do, uh, what you're lobbying for, or how you work with other organizations? Um, and if you haven't done that in a while, it's a great time to make a post about that. Um, I'd look at what we need more of. You know, I mentioned stories today, direct messages, UGC. Um, is there one piece of that that you could implement next month? Um, and finally, this is a very vague, uh, you know, plan here. I know we have a wide range of organizations. I always say aim for two to four posts a week. Sometimes it's going to be two because that's all we can manage. Sometimes we have a big event coming up and it's going to be more. And finally, don't neglect those stories as well. Um, I do have a free content calendar. I will drop for everybody in the chat for anybody who wants more resources. If you're looking for more ways to get in touch, um, then please, uh, please drop that. And then otherwise, as Louise said on the beginning is find me on Instagram at social with Jen. I would love to connect with you. Happy to share more tips and advice. Um, and yeah, I think we can open up for Q. Do we have a couple minutes for Q and A, Louise, or do you want to save those for the end? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that now. Um, yeah. Like, so maybe, maybe five minutes sure. and then we'll, uh, we'll, um, go to Nicole and, uh, Julie and Linnea. So, uh, you can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. Or feel free to unmute if you are, if you're able to unmute. I'm if you sure. can't. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Uh, actually, I'll just kind of keep an eye out on anyone. Any sort of indications. Otherwise, if there's no questions now, then we, we can just uh, we can just do that at the end. So maybe that's what we'll do. Perfect. I'll give all answers. Well said. Given our shortage of time, what would you prioritize? Um, I would prioritize for me repurposing the blog post to carousels because you've already done the work. If you have that long form content. And the carousels for me are what move the dial in terms of that like engagement piece because people really want to know more than just your beautiful photos they want to know like what do you stand for what do you advocate for and what do you you know what do you offer um and so if you're able to add those in even a couple like once or twice a month i think that's well worth your time for sure we said like another question oh we got the was bc lisa saying excellent information so far thank you jen yeah, amazing, Jennifer. Like that might be, you know, we'll we'll definitely have time at the end for for okay. more questions. But I can say to everybody else that it was like really transformative to to work with Jennifer. Uh, she did a, a full audit of our uh, social media like maybe a couple of years ago, and so like you know, advised us on you know what our buckets might look like, and and also just, like this this whole concept about like repurposing uh, our content because we have a lot of content um into like bite sized um little items. So thank you, Jennifer. So uh, Nicole, maybe we'll move over to um, the, the Snowmobile Federation. Tell us what you've been up to, what sort of advice you would like to pass on to everybody here today. You want to take it back, Louise? I'm trying to stop sharing, but I, I don't seem to have the controls. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I think Nicole is there. Are you, sorry, Nicole, Nicole, could you? Yeah. If I can share my screen, hang on. Uh, I think at the moment everybody can share their screen. <laughs> so I'm hoping that it'll be you next. Yeah, so it's good. Can share. you guys see that? Yeah. Here. Perfect. Let me, let me move some stuff around here. Oh, that's funny. Well, let me go to presenter because it's hidden behind. There we go. How's that? All right, so can you guys hear me? 
Did I take myself off mute? Okay, good. Um, so yeah, my name is Nicole. I'm the Program and Marketing Coordinator with the BC Snowmobile Federation. And um, I'll just tell you a little bit about who uh, we are, because I realize not everyone is um, from the snowmobile world. Um, so the Snowmobile Federation has been the voice for organized snowmobiling in BC since um, about 1965. We represent 60 snowmobile clubs. It's about 18,000 kilometers of trail, believe it or not, 90 day use shelters, 100 backcountry riding zones, and nine community co-op partners through our um, program with Destination BC, which is Let's Ride BC. So you can see or imagine there's a lot of diversity there. Um, not only are we representing our own brands and channels, but we're helping to support our member clubs um, through their own social media journey. So how do we use uh, social media at the BC Snowmobile Federation and Let's Ride BC? Um, so we are currently on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Um, our newsletters are also a really big component. I know it's not social media, but um, worthwhile noting the value of um, newsletters. And across our two, um, our two brands, we have, it's actually over 10,000 followers now. Um, and our main, um, our main goals uh, on social media are to build relationships so we want to deliver engaging content. We want to respond and interact with our users and our member clubs, uh, as well as recognize and um, acknowledge our corporate partners. Um, our goal is also to bring our community together, our riding community. So we share resources, tips, tricks, new things we've uploaded on our shared drives. We want to highlight the diversity of our members and our clubs. And then um, also as a forum for discussion and learning amongst each other. Uh, which leads me into education. So we talk a lot on our channels about the benefits of snowmobiling, whether it's economic, health, um, you name it. We also provide um, some safety tips and tailgate top topics to our um, member clubs and our volunteers. And we talk a lot about how to get involved with snowmobiling and with um, uh, your local club. Uh, and then, of course, the main goal sometimes feels like spotlighting our clubs and the programs that we deliver. So whether that's club projects or right now, of course, it's our uh, membership drive. We also want to recognize our incredible volunteers and um, all of the events that are happening around the province. OK, so I just wanted to touch on the value of brand guides. Jennifer is nodding, nodding, nodding. Um, you know, when we represent our clubs, we're representing um, people with very little social media or marketing experience, all the way up to clubs that have um, perhaps even entire teams that are managing their brand. And as you get sort of larger in scale, the number one asset that I recommend is having a brand guide. And it doesn't have to be a huge document, but um, whether you're, you're adding your brand guide and populating it in Canva, or you have a folder, or you have um, just a single sheet, um, a brand guide um, for, the, for our clubs and for our, our federation, um, it, it creates our brand identity. So we wanna deliver a clear, concise, and consistent message across all our channels. Uh, anchoring us as the BC uh, Snowmobile Authority. So um, within our brand guide, we know what our logo is, what our brand colors are, what our tone of voice is. Um, and then you can see what I have here in the imagery is from our Let's, Buy, Let's Ride BC brand guide. Um, and you can see kind of in the bottom left there, some of our um, social media and ad templates. And this makes your life so easy. Jennifer was touching on this. Um, if you have this template set up, you can easily drop a photo in, update the text quickly. And it's really nice because you can carry that, brand, that branding and that same content across all your channels. So whether you're doing a boosted social, a Facebook post, a story, you can just resize um, and you're delivering that consistent um, message and brand. Uh, and we also within our documents have uh, photo and video asset standards. So for us, it's really important that we're promoting, um, you know, you have to, you can't wear a ski helmet on a snowmobile, you have to wear a DOT helmet. So when we're working with um, content generator, content producers, I can kind of hand them this, this brand uh, document and they know exactly what to, what to deliver me. And maybe that's something you're delivering to your volunteers. So they know, okay, this is the standard type of photos that we want. So 
If you guys saw my first intro screen, it was uh, branded for the BC Snowmobile Federation. And here's one that's branded for uh, Let's Ride BC. So you can see quickly in Canva, I just rebranded it. And in 30 seconds, um, I had it, you know, now to our Let's Ride BC brand. And right away, just by looking at this, you can recognize who we are and what we stand for. It's a little bit more punchy. It's different fonts. It really is delivering our, our core messaging. Okay, so what have we found that's effective? Well, as I said, we represent a huge uh, demographic of clubs, people that are, you know, uh, not so experienced to people that are very experienced. And I always say when I'm chatting with our clubs and thinking about how to educate them and how to help them, um, it has to be fast, easy, and free. So I'm going to focus on a couple things here. Um, I tell the clubs to use all the channels at their disposal. So um, Facebook, for example, has a, sort of a core demographic we're finding of 40 year old plus. But if I want to get new volunteers coming out to an event, I might want to focus more on posting it on TikTok or Instagram as an example. Um, and then some people aren't on social media at all. So that's where the newsletter and the website come in. Um, let me just minimize this so that I can see my screen. Uh, we, Jennifer touched on this. So use your header, header features. So on Facebook, you can um, add a pin to the top of your Facebook page or your Instagram highlights to really deliver core content quickly. Um, we uh, on our channels really feature landing sites. We direct a lot, a lot, a lot of content to landing sites. So whether that's uh, a website events calendar, um, whether it's a campaign, I always like to direct people to um, uh, a landing site where they can get more information. And the key uh, thing to remember too is to reply to your comments. If you have a nasty comment, don't delete it. Take it as an opportunity maybe to educate and um, engage and seek feedback. And remember that you own your channel. You have the right to um, sort of manage the content and tone. And if you have someone that's, I don't know, saying something nasty or um, that's not contributing to the conversation in a professional way, uh, I think it's reasonable to say, listen, you know, we don't tolerate that type of language or uh, you know, don't talk about our volunteers that way. And that's fair, fair to say that to people. Uh, hopefully you don't have to ban them, but that's also a channel if you're finding a lot of, um, you know, spam or negative types of comments. And some tools. So there's a lot of really great free resources out there. So if you're a not-for-profit society in BC, uh, apply for Google Ad Grants. Um, that basically will give you $10,000 in, in paid um, Google ads. Uh, we talked about user generated content, um, using hashtags. So make sure that your club has a hashtag and, um, really feature that so that you can create some common threads and people can find your content and search it and also engage with you by tagging their photos in it. Uh, I really love meta business suite for social media, uh, planning. So don't feel like you have to sit on Facebook and come up with something every day. Uh, Meta Business Suite will allow you to, I think you can post eight weeks or two months in advance. I can't remember exactly, but um, you know, you could sit down on a Sunday afternoon when you've got a couple of good ideas, create the post, drop it in, and you can move those around. Um, you know, if you had some, some great news that came up today, you could shift a scheduled post to tomorrow or next week. Um, as I said, with the Federation, we really like to direct traffic to our website. I kind of use our posts as a bit of a, uh, an idea catcher or a bit of inspiration to direct people to a larger blog post um, or, you know, like an economic impact study or an event. Uh, Canva is a really great free tool. And honestly, the pro version is quite affordable as well. Um, I feel like every uh, week almost, it seems they're adding new features, but there's tons of templates and um, um, all sorts of AI tools in there now that are really a, a handy asset to help you quick, uh, help you make social media posts quickly. Um, and if you're a larger um, operation with some budget, you could look at doing something like CrowdRiff uh, or Media Hub. And honestly, we found over the years that boosted posts really are a, a great bang for your buck. That's where our biggest um, traction and engagement comes from. So, you know, you can set your price range from anything from $10 a day to sky's the limit. And um, it, really those boosted posts are a great way to, to generate ad traffic to your 
uh, your landing site or your web page or a campaign. And I'm gonna stop sharing there. That's all I had, Louise. <laughs> thanks. Did you see my? We got two more minutes to call. <laughs> well, thanks. That was that was amazing. And I think there was a, a couple of questions. I think maybe one from from Daniel. So Nicole, maybe just take a look in in the chat. Uh, let's move over to Linnea and uh, Julie from uh, North Okanagan Cycling Society. Got uh, seven minutes. <laughs> thanks. Louise, can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear you. Okay. And can you see my screen? Because I've lost it. No. Yep. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. Wonderful. Okay. So we are with Knox, which is the North Okanagan Cycling Society, Lynette and I. And Knox is here. Knox is essentially a bike club that maintains trails. We protect, maintain, and develop trails without, within the North Okanagan. And we currently have over 200 kilometers of trails and are expanding this further. So we operate in three provincial parks and we fund all of our trail maintenance and construction of trails. And over to Linnea. Perfect, thank you. Nice to meet everyone. Um, uh, why we feel we need to use social media, um, it gives us a broad reach. Uh, it's a big community builder and we'll touch on that later. Um, we're able to speak a lot about our membership awareness, uh, sponsorship acknowledgement, acknowledgements. This is important to us because this is part of our sponsorship um, agreements and our sponsorship program. And so there's value in that for our sponsors. And then updates. So keeping people um, up to date with a variety of things. And we'll also touch on that a little bit. I also want to mention that it's a direct and cost effective way for us to connect with a wide audience and allows us uh, to showcase our efforts, engage with our members and our, I don't really call them customers, but because they do purchase memberships, um, members uh, in real time using stories and then helps us boost our brand reputation, um, recognition and loyalty, and then makes it which is all wraps up to be a uh, central part of our marketing strategy. Great. So Knox decided actually before I started with them, uh, we have a working board and there are many rules within Knox that directors are putting countless hours to, but it was decided that social media was the one that had outgrown being a volunteer position um, as it needed almost daily attention. So with the growth of the club, uh, the recognition for sponsors needed, events taking place, all the trail maintenance happening. Uh, it was decided to hire a social media contractor and Knox put out the call for proposals. And Linnea was awarded the contract and we've worked together, I think, three years now. Yeah, it's been three yeah. years. And it's it's been a really great introduction to the club. She has been. Thank you. My screen has a bit of a lag, but I know it's my turn. So um, <laughs> our busy club is a lot going on. And as Jennifer has touched on, uh, we actually get a lot of our, we've repurposed our content from our weekly newsletters that Julie does such a wonderful job um, wrangling all of the information from all of our sources for. So I uh, thank her for that. And we're able to pull our content and create social posts and stories from this. And so on average, like one newsletter can give us like five to eight um, pieces of content. And it's already there, it's pretty much packaged. We usually have photos ready to go. And so it's just porting that over to um, like Meta Business um, and then sharing that uh, adequately. And a bit of things go back and forth too. Like Julie, like, can I, uh, I posted something then she's like, can I take that image and share that in the newsletter for like the ne next week? So we find it's a really uh, good crossover for that for us. Um, and then also, that um, newsletters work for us because some people aren't on social, but then social works great for us because we don't always have everyone that's reading their emails. So kind of 
catch his ball. So on to the next one. Um, we call them content categories, but content fillers. These are our um, top six most regularly posted ones. Um, so we'll see, we, we try to do membership Mondays, trail days come and go as the season happens. Um, sponsorship acknowledgements are really important to us as we have um, a vast array of sponsorship sponsors um, that deserve a shout out because our club wouldn't be where we are today without them. Um, events are also seasonal. We take a bit of a break in the summer. So we're just firing those back up and people will see that on our feed again. Um, trail user promotions. So we have a lot of crossover with trails, with um, like trail running groups uh, and even like horseback riding and even just like moms with strollers, people with dogs. Um, so we're trying to promote like the vast range of trail users. Uh, we do a bit of member input, a little bit less of this one, but that's how we actually decided our decal color for this year. And um, that decal is something that uh, went members um, purchase their membership on our website, then they're able to go in. We drive traffic to our three local bike shops and they have to go in and physically pick that up. So it's a bit of a, a community handoff there. And um, so that was really interesting to see uh, and collect. And I can't remember the exact number of um, input we had, but it was a lot over Facebook and Instagram. Our trail crew, we have a paid trail crew. And so keeping um, the updates from that are super important to us. And then also to our sponsors, which is a Cal Tire, which is our trail crew for that, or a trail crew sponsor. And then local announcements. So this one's um, pretty popular for us. Uh, recently, we had a like a parking lot that's going to be being improved by PC Parks. So making sure that people know um, that they can access that and whatever else, other um, things that might interfere with trail use, we make sure that it's shared too. I think it's worth mentioning that Linnea, um, that people are are supporting the content by sending her pictures, like the trail crew sending her updates of what they're working on to help keep this content flowing. And we have a ton of great photographers in the region that are, are sharing pictures with us as well. Yeah, we're very fortunate for that. Um, and we'll, that will lead us into our next slide, which is about um, our hashtag. So long before I started, the mountain bike ha um, Vernon hashtag was created. And then now uh, we also use our knock stop Vernon um, hashtag on Instagram. Some people do tag us on Facebook as well, but as we know, um, sharing on there just isn't um, as seamless as it is on Instagram. Uh, we've had um, seen nice growth for our um, hashtag over the years. You can see those values there. And our stories have, um, have grown a lot. And we I expect to um, surpass the 2022 um, values as well. Um, the importance of the hashtag to us is that it's helped us grow organically and increase our reach. In, con in conjunction with the hashtag, we also encur mem encourage members to tag our account so that we can um, share their trail experiences. By doing so, we've arrived at a point that people consistently tag us on both Facebook and Instagram um, and use their hashtags in our posts. So it's just something that it's almost like, um, I don't know, something super common for them to do now. So that's exciting to see. And our growth has been achieved 100% organically without the use of any paid advertising. So this is where we've seen our, our community grow. And just by putting the time in and sharing those and, um, and sharing all of it, um, most, I would say 99.9% .9 is good. Um, there's sometimes that things get a little hairy, but very rarely. So we're fortunate for that. Um, but as you can see, our stories are very popular and ever an ever growing area for us. Um, and we find that's a really great place to share kind of the off the cuff stuff and uh, the real live updates. That takes us into our platforms. Um, I realized after I'd forgotten one on that, but I'll on here, but I'll touch on that. Um, Meta Business is. Uh, linked to obviously to Facebook and Instagram. So that's where a majority of our um, content sharing and post scheduling and all of that comes from. And then we also use Linktree. So we use that as our link in bio uh, for Instagram. And then I've actually in the past year have just started sharing that 
our link tree in Facebook caption because there's always more um, links on our link tree that could possibly sp spark some attention, whether that's like a membership or something that's just a bit off topic, but still relevant. So we're finding that very useful. So that was the one I'd forgot was Linktree. Canva is a hot topic, but very, very useful and very easy to use. We have the pro account um, and it allows us to access a wide array of templates and fonts and graphics and tools and so much more as anybody knows that possibly does use it. Um, and then we've actually uploaded our, our version of our brand guide, I guess, our font and our logos in there. And that helps us allow to like pop everything in really quick. And then we're um, tracking our social media analytics on a monthly basis. And we feel like this is essential to measure the effectiveness of our efforts, especially because this is a paid position. Um, so we wanna make sure that it is worth its dollar. Um, it provides valuable insights to our, into our audience engagement our content performance, and this allows us to refine our strategies. Uh, regular monitoring helps identify what's working and what's not. And in, in our fortunate um, situation, things have been working. Um, and then for communications, just between us, email is our main form of communication between Julia, our executive director, our events coordinator, trail director, and myself. Uh, and then when we have product uh, projects that require collaboration, we uh, lean on Google Meet or Zoom as our go-to. And then in conclusion, uh, social media has provided, has played a pivotal role in our club's growth over the last three years uh, since we started tracking all of our um, metrics and our board recognizes its vital importance to our organization. With a dedicated social media coordinate, coordinator like myself on board, we've experienced substantial growth and expansion and engagement within our community and just like built that community, which we're all very proud of. And it's been more than just myself um, that's been a part of that journey. This growth is a testament to the impact and effectiveness of social media and this management and connecting with our target audience, sharing our mission and building a vibrant online, building a vibrant online presence that aligns with our club schools. Thanks so much. So that's amazing. Awesome. Oh, oh, yeah, great. Amazing. I, I've been following Knox for quite a while and I'm all and, and the same with the BC Snow Wheel Federation. Like you were just doing, you know, fabulous work. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if you get some emails, you know, uh, later today from, from people who have got some questions. But let's take questions here. Uh, let's just. Uh, Okay, so we just got got a question here. Like somebody's in the process of hiring a job. It's a marketing coordinator. You can definitely share this webinar with them. Um, let's see what we didn't. Oh, I can see that Jennifer's been very good at responding, and we've got Donegal responding. Which ones are not? So we've got uh, Lisa Lopez asking. Anybody's using Threads? Uh, we're starting up a presence there ourselves. So we've heard some good things about it. Uh, Jennifer, what what uh, do you have anything to say about threats? Oh, oh no! Does it help if I do that? There we go. Yes, I can unmute now. Um, I am on Threads at Social with Jen. If anybody wants to connect there, um, I think it's hard to say where Threads is going to go. Threads had massive growth because it's directly integrated to Instagram. I'm a big fan of like set up your account. It will only take five seconds because Instagram and Threads are the same. Uh, obviously, back end. Um, even myself and I am all in social media, I don't open up the app probably as much as I should. I'm trying to be good about it. So I'm a big fan of like, don't spread yourself too thin, you know, set up your profile, see who's connected there. Um, obviously if you have a dedicated resource, you know, on your team who can do it, it's probably a great idea, but I know for many of you, you don't have an awesome, uh, social media coordinator on your team to help out. So set up the profile, but I'd rather you guys be doing really great on one or two channels and, you know, than trying to manage it all. Great. We've got one here from Kelly Gold Cycling Club. Would be stoked to hear how people are getting creative with recognizing sponsors, but not plastering logos all over social media. Yeah, we, I think we've all kind of seen that. Uh, yeah. So what about you, Nicole? Do you have anything or, or Julie, any advice to kind of share? Because there's always going to be some deliverables if you take sponsorship bucks. I can speak to that. That's um, what yeah. Linda was touching upon with our membership Mondays or our designated days um, that we would often try to do a, a general message and tag all of our sponsors in it. 
So it's not a specific, sometimes you can do a specific shout out, but often it was more of a message that just included them. Good advice. Nicole, do you have something? So you no, I think for us at the Federation, I mean, we do a, a, a little mix of everything, but I think where our partners really feel good value is when we show their, A, we generate the content for them, but we show their products in use and explain how it's benefiting um, riders or the commu community. So for example, we have um, a truck provided to, to Donegal to help her um, get around the province. And, uh, you know, anytime she's on the road, we do a Donegal spotting and we show the truck in some beautiful location with, with the logos on it. And, you know, just say, oh, Donegal's on the road to the South Peace this week. And, um, or whether it's, you know, Zolio or InReach or um, I think showing those products in use and how they are really integrating with your, your, your members or your community is, is of value. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, Paul has got another question. Twitter or X seems more iffy as a medium. Do you still recommend it? What, what, what did you say, Jennifer? Oh, I think I replied in the chat, but- uh, Oh, sorry. I think, okay. I think for most of us here though, that's okay. There was a couple questions. I think for most of us here, like Twitter slash X, um, it's probably not going to be your main channel of choice. You know, the lifetime of a, of a tweet or a, a post on that channel is so short. Um, it's really for, you know, really topical news. It's highly politicized, as we know. Um, that again, I think where most of your members are hanging out, given your user bases are Facebook, Instagram, potentially TikTok for some of your channels as well. I'm glad that was mentioned. Um, so I typically don't post a lot on X. It's sometimes good for getting the pulse on things, especially in a highly news sensitive uh, period of time. But I think from a management perspective, again, uh, for those with limited resources, Instagram and Facebook is a better bet. Good. I think we're probably almost out of time. I'm not sure that I'm seeing one of anything is if we miss something. I think Jennifer, yeah, you really have been covering everything off really well. Um, okay. Gina, BC, uh, BC uh, Marine Trails put out a call for a volunteer and a graphic design student to set up our brand guidelines and use it for her portfolio. So that's definitely another opportunity. Find somebody who's got a lot to gain and somebody with already ex skills and, and enthusiasm to, to help you out. Um, yeah, so yeah, I just kind of see some thank yous here. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll send the recording. Uh, I think Jennifer's got a little bit of content that she'll send me that I'll send you. Uh, and let me know anytime if there's something, maybe a different aspect of aspect of communications, social media that you would like us to do another training um, session on and might ask Jennifer if she'll come back. Um, so yeah, thanks for, for coming today. I should say that uh, our next webinar is on October 16th at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it's going to be on the outdoor recreation economy. We're going to look at the role of outdoor recreation in BC's economy and current initiatives to advance the sector. We've got um, a panel, uh, we've got somebody from the outdoor recreation roundtable in the US who's got a lot of experience in sort of uh, help uh, supporting, uh, so sort of like the development of the outdoor recreation economy in the US. We've got John Hawkins from the province. We've got Wendy Coe from the Minister of, of uh, Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation, um, and uh, a few other uh, panelists, but uh, that'll all go out in one of our next emails that I think Soraya will send out maybe later uh, later this week. So feel free to, to sign up. Um, yeah, and any any sort of like webinar suggestions, like just send that to me. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Jennifer, Julie, uh, Linnea, and Nicole for, for presenting uh, today. And thank you, everybody, for, for joining us. So I think I think that's kind of it. <laughs> Thanks, David, for the wave. We'll see you all uh, hopefully at the next next time we host.